Republican lawmaker from Texas, Dan Crenshaw, took aim at his GOP colleagues, and what he said was really interesting. This is perhaps the only time Dan Crenshaw has ever said anything that I actually agree with. Nonetheless, let's have a look at what he has to say. Supporting these two, there's actually other veterans in Morgan's race, uh, there's other front runners, but why support these two? Well, because I've been in Congress for almost three years now. There's two types of members of Congress. There's performance artists, and there's legislators. Now, the performance artists are the ones that get all the attention. They're the ones you think are more conservative because they know how to say slogans real well. They know how to recite the lines that they know that our voters want to hear. Let me tell you guys something. In the first two years of Trump's presidency, when Republicans were in control, when every single time we were voting on Donald Trump's agenda, who do you think was at the top of that list voting with Trump, and who do you think was at the bottom? A lot of names you would recognize were at the bottom of that list. A lot of names you would recognize were at the top of that list. Number two is it's probably going to make you cringe a little bit. It's Adam Kinsinger. Voted with Trump almost 99%. He was number two. But who's at the bottom? Everybody in the Freedom Caucus. All of them. What you hear so often is not true. It's not true. We have grifters in our midst. Not here, not like in this room, that's not what I mean. I mean in the conservative movement. Lie after lie after lie because they know something psychologically about the conservative heart. We're worried about what people are going to do to, do to us, what they're going to infringe upon us. That last line there was kind of a tacit admission that the GOP base is incredibly gullible, which is embarrassing. But I mean, that's to be expected. Conservatism is a political ideology that is flawed in a number of ways. So, of course, their base is susceptible to just vacuous bullshit and virtue signaling and sloganeering. Um, but what he says here, I think, is absolutely correct. It's not like other non-crazy Republicans to the extent that those exist in Washington. It's not like they're also very good at legislating. But it, what he's speaking to is the extra stupidity that people like Marjorie Green, Lauren Boebert, Matt Gates, and Louis Gohmert bring to the table. Now, I don't like Dan Crenshaw. I don't agree with anything about conservatism, and I disagree with every single Republican. But I do think it is important to, to differentiate between the Republican Party, which overall is pretty extremist, and then the people who are straight up in cuckoo land like they're they're out of this world they reject empirical reality they're conspiratorial and they're just dumb now when he talks about the freedom caucus let's be clear here these are the people that are part of the freedom caucus that includes mo brooks paul gosar lauren bobert matt gates marjorie taylor green madison cawthorn louis gomert among others but i mean this is the group of people in congress within the gop that somehow by a miracle from God, managed to reach adulthood without accidentally dying by forgetting to breathe or eating too many paint chips or something like that. Now, aside from that, they also made it to Congress. So it's almost shocking that they ended up there. This is what failing up looks like. Because, you know, in some areas of the country, the dumber you are, the more radical you are with regard to conservatism, the more likely you are to succeed. And that's not a good political climate because it's just going to create this snowball effect where extremism breeds more extremism and more extremism. The problem is that for years, and this is what I wish someone like Dan Crenshaw would address, is that the Republican Party establishment has been pandering to these types of people. Marjorie Greens of the world, the Lauren Boberts of the world. So to see these loons take over the party, I mean, you kind of invited them in, did you not? For decades, this is what you've been trying to appeal to. This is the base that you've tried to appeal to. And now the monkeys have taken over the zoo and the more normal Republicans, not that any Republican is normal, but the more normal ones, the less crazy ones, just the normal crazy ones, I guess, you know, they're now having to shut the fuck up and just pretend like everything is copacetic, pretend like Trump's lies about the election are valid, pretend like people like Marjorie Greene aren't batshit fucking insane. And... 
Again, the GOP invited this. Now, that's not to say that Dan Crenshaw in particular is to blame because he is relatively new to Congress. Uh, but I do think that it is important for him to call out his predecessors. And on top of that, I do think that he does deserve credit for calling out members of his caucus because this is something that you don't really see that frequently because Republicans all know that they have to say and do certain things in order to remain electorally viable. You have to uh, pander to Trump supporters. You have to pay lip service to the idea that Donald Trump actually won in 2020, even if that lie is killing democracy. Uh, so to see him kind of shirk modern Republican Party orthodoxy, I think that that is commendable. I think that that does take a level of courage that other lawmakers, his other colleagues, aren't willing to really um, exhibit, I guess. you know. And you have some folks like Liz Cheney, but I, I feel like what she does is less genuine than what Dan Crenshaw does. And let me elaborate on that. All throughout Liz Cheney's career, she's been a careerist. She's been a political opportunist. And when I see her condemn the Trump wing of her party, it really signals to me that she just wants to be a future leader in the Republican Party and maybe carve out a lane for herself in the anti-Trump portion of the Republican Party. Whereas with Dan Crenshaw, you know, I don't like to use the word straight shooter, but it seems to me like he genuinely is just mad that when he condemns the big lie, he gets pushed back. And he doesn't like that the, these crazies are taking over his party because he doesn't want to see this far-right extremism in his party. He just wants normal far-right Republican politics where you got the social safety net and privatize everything. Like, he wants to get back to that. And all of these idiots are distracting overall from the core goal of the Republican Party's donors. So, like, I don't want to prop up Dan Crenshaw as some sort of a, you know, I don't know, ideal Republican because all Republicans by default are bad because their theories are economically, morally, and just socially bankrupt. But still, it's nice to see someone in the GOP at least speak to the craziness because if you don't call this out, then you're kind of complicit. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching, so I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.